I've said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were so displeased. And said unto him, Hear thou what you say? And Jesus said to them, Yeah, have ye never read how the mount of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? And he left, verse 17, he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, listen now, watch, and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee, henceforth, henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Wow. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Very I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things. Yeah. Did he say some things? No. He said, and all things. And all things. Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe in ye shall receive. Now the word ask here doesn't mean asking, asking, asking. There are things that you use your authority in the name of Jesus. You give commands. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's telling you here. He said, all things, all things that he asked in prayer, he said, it shall be done. So let the word of God give you the consciousness of dominion that every word you speak must come to pass, must be fulfilled. You remember Jesus said, heaven at last will be not one title or judge of my word will pass away without it being fulfilled. He said, it is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So a man of dominion becomes conscious that his words are spirit and life. And that they must come to pass. That's the word of the king. They cannot not come to pass. They must come to pass. So you give commands. Through your words, excess dominion through your words, and you go knowing that you don't have to come back to look and say and see whether your word will happen or not. No, a thousand times no. The king has spoken. This king is not an ordinary king, he's God's kind of king. He has the instrument of authority, which is the Holy Spirit, upon his words. He has learned never, he has learned. He has come to the point that his words are never, ever ordinary. That every word that comes out of his, his mouth are impregnated, you know, frightened upon, fried by the Holy Ghost to make things happen. To make things happen. To change anything. He must have that mindset, that consciousness. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now we read for our investment. Number two. He said, and when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests, you see, the religious folks, those who say, no, no, there's COVID, don't open the church. No, if you want to lay hands, wear gloves, you know, before you lay hands. You don't use sanitizer. You don't even give Holy Communion. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. The other day, the Lord called them fools when he was talking to me. I've never had this in my whole life. You see, they are here. They didn't just start to study it back in the day, the Bible day. The religious people came upon us and they said, and when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests 
And the elders of him came unto him as he was sitting and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Wow. You see? You see why it has to be a mindset? They have challenged him. What you are doing? Who gave you the right to do it? We are the powers that be. We are in charge. You never consulted us. You need to take permission from us. You didn't do that. We didn't permit you. And you're going on your own to do this off. Jesus, who gave you this authority? Who the hell are you? You see? And he was calm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He was so calm. Why? Because he was born into dominion. He came with dominion. He was conscious of his dominion. He knew that the whole world was his. Even hell was his. And so these little brats that were challenging him could not intimidate him. You can't intimidate a king in his domain. You can't. Look at what Jesus said. It's interesting. He said, and Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you will tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do this thing. And you know the word dominion. The word authority is the same thing as the word dominion. As carries the same thing. That's what I just read over to you in the Amplified Version. You know, so he said, he said, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I will, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Just two questions. The baptism of John, of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did you not then believe him? But in shall say of men, we fear the people for all who John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Wow. Jesus knew. This is what happened here. He knew that God gave authority. He knew his authority was there. He knew he had unquestioned, unchallengeable authority. And that his word was final. He was conscious of it. He couldn't be intimidated out of it. That's what you do. When you get into nations, when you get into the territories, you know, when you come in sicknesses and diseases, situations and circumstances in your life that are not consistent with the word of God, they are going to question you. But you must be conscious of your authority. Of your dominion to give that word that final word and when you give it it's final you have to understand that your word is law god told me sometime as many years ago he said your word is law even when i tell me recently he said you are government so your word is law in the realm of the spirit in this world and under that you, your word the words that you speak that are consistent with the will of God, carries the anointing of the Holy Ghost and is effective in the heavenly realm. I don't mean where God is sitting. I mean the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere over the earth. That's the heavenly realm. That's the spiritual realm. That word that you speak also is effective on this earth and then under the earth. Praise God. Maybe you heard about a man called Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, he came before King Ahab and said, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, that man was so conscious of his dominion. He was so conscious of his authority. He said, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, there shall be no dew or rain in this nation except by my word. Ex, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He said, except by my word. The king has soldiers. The king was in power. The king was exercising physical authority. But Elijah was conscious of authority of another kind. 
the one that came from heaven. And he said, there's not going to be rain here or dew except by my word. Check your Bible. You can read the story for yourself. Bible tells us, not only in Jerusalem at that time, in the whole ark for a period of three and a half years, there was no rain. Check your Bible. Because the man spoke a word. And he left that. They couldn't find him. There was not going to be rain until God even began to build with light and say, please show yourself. Please show yourself. So yeah. A lot of people are suffering and dying. Please show yourself. You know what? God has no power on over things on this earth except through you. Then you have over things on this earth except through God. It is a walking partnership. I told you last week that Elijah took hold of this authority of his dominion, got into the court of the king, and spoke directly to his face. Left. His word was not just effective in one government. It was ju it's just his word was not just effective in the state. That word that that man of God spoke, that prophet of God spoke, took hold of a nation. I'm talking about God's nation, not, not this. I lost I lost trust nations that we find on these days. His word, the word of one took hold of a nation and took hold of the whole universe. 26 months. 